Alright, in this video we will continue to work with similar triangles and uh, we're going to do two things. We'll practice making um, our similarity statements and uh, statements of proportionality, but we're also going to get into a few word problems, some real world problems. Okay, so looking at number 10, use the diagram to complete the following. So we're starting off here with a similarity statement. Okay, now look at the angles to guide us. So we can see that these triangles are oriented the same way. The Q, the M, they're congruent, they're both on the left. The R, the N, they're congruent, they're both on the right. So this should be pretty simple. So if I have P, Q, R, P um, is in the same position as L. So um, I can go ahead and say, let me zoom in. Uh, triangle and then I can go ahead and say L and then Q is in the same position as M so I can say M next and so now I've done L and M so that just leaves N so the last letter must be N okay now how about the statement of proportionality Okay, um, let's see, I, I like to use colors a lot. So um, let me do that. All right, so the greens here are uh, corresponding and uh, the pinks here are corresponding and what's the other one? The blues are corresponding, okay? So, let's see, so when I say PQ, all right, PQ, we're talking pinks, right? So PQ uh, goes with LM. So there we go, LM. QR, okay, goes with MN. And of course, RP, the blue, goes with NL. Okay, that's your statement of proportionality. So again, we have 20 over something. All right, well, look, uh, it'll be the green. So 20 over 15 is what you would want to do. All right. 20 over 15 and that should equal something involving a 12 in it where's the 12 okay so now we're talking pinks so we did 20 over 15 so that'll be now y over 12 left right over left right y over 12 Okay, greens, pinks. All right, now looking at the next one. We have something over 20. All right, this is the only 20 we have. So if I go something over 20, it's probably going to be 15 over 20. All right, let's see if that can work for us. All right, we'll do 15 over 20. So we're doing right over left this time. Greens. Now I got this 18 though, all right? So 18 is blue. So I'm doing right over left this time. So if I do 15 over 20, that'll be 18 over X. Blue, blue, right, left, right, left. Okay. And then down here, we're supposed to say, well, what is y and what is x? Well, we can actually use this equation up here to find y, can't we? Um, by cross multiplying. So when I talk about cross multiplying, I'm talking about using these diagonals like this and, and then like this. Okay, so if I do that, 15 times y, so that's uh, 15y equals. Now, 20 times 12, 
that's 240. Okay, and then of course I could divide by 15 on both sides. Okay, so that is 16. So y comes out to be exactly 16. Okay, what about x? All right, so um, I'm going to do the same thing. All right, I'm going to do my cross multiplication. All right, so uh, 15 times x, just, um, so that'll be 15x, and then 20 times 18. So that's 360. And then I could divide both sides by 15. And that's 24. So I get x is equal to 24. OK. So that's it for problem number uh, 10. So um, let's look at this. Uh, problem number 11 is like a word problem, real world problem. OK. A hockey player passes the puck to a teammate by bouncing the puck off a wall of the rink as shown. Kapow! Like that. From physics, the angles that the path of the puck makes with the wall are congruent. So in other words, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. All right. In other words, these two angles are going to be the same. And uh, clearly we have 90 degree angles right here. So already that's angle-angle similarity. So these two triangles are going to be similar. So we can use that to answer the question, which is, how far from the wall will the pass be picked up by his teammate? In other words, look, we're looking for this distance right here. How far from the wall will he receive the puck? Okay, we'll call that x. So we can set up a proportion. All right, um, the 9 and the 12 are corresponding, so that's a good place to start. All right, so 9 over 12, that's a pair of corresponding sides. And of course, the 8 and the x are corresponding sides. All right, so if I do 9 over 12, that'll be 8 over x. So it's just a matter of solving this proportion. All right, we will cross multiply like you do. OK, and uh, so looking at the yellows there, that's going to give us 9x is equal to. And then, uh, of course, 8 times 12 is going to be 96. Um, so getting x by itself is just a matter of dividing both sides by 9. And in a real world problem, we're going to want decimals. So 96 divided by 9. <coughs> OK, and uh, we'll round to one decimal place. So 10.7, got to round up. All right, 10.7 feet. OK, all right, one more. Let's look at problem number 12. All right, number 12 is showing one of the practical uses of similar triangles. Um, 
if you put a mirror on the ground in front of a tall object then and you want to estimate the height of that object you put that mirror on the ground look at the mirror and put it just at the right spot where you can just see the top of the uh, thing that you're trying to measure in the mirror then that creates a pair of similar triangles as shown um, your body creates a similar triangle with the mirror and then the uh, tall shape creates another similar triangle uh, with the mirror and sort of like the hockey puck these two angles are always going to be congruent the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection um, so we're given these measurements the height of the person distance from the mirror and again distance from the mirror and now we're looking for the height okay so it's pretty much just like the hockey problem okay so um, once again let's start by doing a pair of corresponding size that we know alright so the four feet and the 100 feet those are definitely going to be corresponding so let's go ahead and set that up so we have four over 100 feet okay and this says H over here I don't know if you can see that okay we're trying to get H so anyway um, we did 4 over 100 now the 6 and the H are corresponding size so we'll have to do 6 feet over H okay so that'll be 6 um, over H so it's just a matter of solving this so we'll cross multiply um, so if we cross multiply we are looking at these diagonals like this and like this I'm trying to find one that's not gonna mess everything up okay that should be okay so um, in other words 4 times H we will just have 4 H 6 times 100 is going to be 600 and then uh, all we have to do is divide both sides by 4 150. So um, the height of the unisphere is 150 feet. All right, and that is going to do it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope to see you on another video.